were talking about how we can all make more money. And I think this subject is something that's near and dear to all of us. We all want to get that extra 10, 15, 25 percent on top of our domestic sales by using the, our uh, investment that we've already made, but to get more orders going to foreign countries. Um, my name is Roy Paulson. I'm president of Paulson Manufacturing. And I happen to have quite a few years of exporting experience that uh, has been augmented and uh, in some cases initiated by some of the people here at this table. And so what I, from my experiences of uh, life of hard knocks, so to speak, in, in the exporting world and finally getting really good success there over the years, I thought one of the best panels we could have was some of the resources that are available in our area to, to help bring this idea of exporting as a successful model to your lives and to show you what these resources are. So what I have here on the panel, Mr. Fred Latifariza from the U.S. Commercial Service. He's the director of the local USIAC, that's the United States Export Assistance Center. We have Elizabeth Wynn from CMTC, who is today going to be speaking about training for exporting. CMTC has a broad portfolio of training programs, not just in exporting. So make sure you stop by the booth for CMTC so you can see their complete portfolio. And we have Sandra Donzella from the XM Bank. And the XM Bank is a, a uh, one of the many methods for uh, financing your export orders. And she'll be explaining some of those options for you and how the, the XM Bank utilizes commercial banks in a way that leverages the money to your advantage. So today we're going to be moving in 15 minute segments for each speaker and then we'll open it up for uh, questions afterwards. We have to move right along because we really don't have that much time. Fred, I'll let you take it away. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you very much, Roy. I'm going to do a quick plug-in here of uh, representing the United States Department of Commerce, but I first want to ignore, acknowledge Roy Paulson. When we talk about resources, important that I've always learned from my dad is you surround yourself with people that are a heck of a lot smarter than you are. Meaning that when the District Export Council started, which members are appointed by the Secretary of Commerce, we just happen to have right here in our backyard nationally, internationally, Mr. Rory Paulson, who's the chairman on that. So we are very fortunate to have that. And in the back of the row, I also have another member, Peter Barmack, who also represents the District Export Council. These individuals are resources that I'm going to be talking about this morning in reference to how to promote your product and how to promote your services worldwide. Now, how do we go about that? It's just simply, if you did not get anything in the 15 minutes that I present to you, is that if you haven't exported, the opportunities there 95%, ladies and gentlemen, 95% of the opportunities are outside the United States. Just to give you some perspective. Another part I just wanted to give you from this region, Riverside County, San Bernardino County, in the last year, two years, 20% growth. Tremendous growth on that. So having said that, let me go right into the part on to where does the role of the U.S. government provide on that? Well, the U.S. Department of Commerce were one of 160 offices in 80 countries. Yes, we, the International Trade Administration, specifically the U.S. and Foreign Commercial Service. So if you happen to be in the Middle East, if you happen to be in Europe, South Africa, we have a presence on there were the direct connections to the U.S. embassies. And that's the key into expanding markets overseas. And let me tell you how we go about that. 
our global network of trade prof uh, professionals, uh, we have perhaps well over 1,400. Every year we have thousands of U.S. companies. And I'll give you some examples here in a minute in how we go about that. Okay, we work to connect your company with the right opportunities abroad. We access export readiness companies. We identify key markets. We determine sales potentials. And then we also help you with the expert plan. So let me just bring it down in basic terms on it. So someone comes up and approaches me in my office, and we have about four trade specialists, international trade specialists, that have specialties anywhere from aerospace automotive, renewable energy, information technology, agriculture. So we have specialties in that field. We make an assessment. But the most important part, we don't do it by just email. We actually visit your facility. We really want to know what the product is. And it's important. The gentleman was just interviewing me today. You know. This is where the rubber meets the road. Is the manufacturer from each and every one of you? You know, how do we go about expanding markets over the years? And how do we utilize the US government resources in expanding markets overseas on that? So the first start is obviously is to making sure, if nothing else, is knowing what your product identification, which is called the harmonized code schedule D. The reason I mentioned that here again, the Department of Commerce provides these export statistics. Immediately within less than an hour, I could tell you how much was exported and how much was exported for the last 10 years, and I could give you the top 10 countries. Doesn't cost you anything. That's a start in the beginning to make an assessment in how do we target key markets based on the resources that we provide. That's all provided by our office, the Department of Commerce. Now, as I already mentioned it to you, is that we provide trade counseling one-on-one -on -one based on your criteria, not our criteria. We provide market intelligence reports. We target the best trade opportunities in terms of expanding markets. And guess what? We also do business matching which means that if you're ready to commit and make, and make that sale overseas, we'll match you with potential distributors and we'll match you with potential buyers overseas on that. If it sounds too good to be true, it is true. It's, and I could give you some good examples on it. Roy Paulson is one of them. We have Kasum Kavia, another District Export Council member who I've worked with for 20 years. And C was one of the key companies right here out of Corona was selected and identified and kudos given to her by the President of the United States. Small company and someone that started with one individual but expanded to well over 30 to 40 employees today. Now, let me just quickly go through here. Uh, real results, I, and I'm, I'm using this as an example. We have a dredging supply company. They happen to be in Louisiana, and it's a manufacturer of uh, dredging supplies company. They shipped about 3.5 million dredging on schedule thanks to the U.S. Commercial Service in getting an emergency permit issued for the shipping, saving well over $200,000. That's just to give you an example that we have documentations and actually a book of export success stories on that. Now, this is something that I'd like to just take a moment and share with you what a country commercial guide is. A country commercial guide gives you a perspective overview from let me give you an example, let's say Brazil or Mexico or France. So immediately, at no cost at all, we'll give you the economic perspective, we'll give you the GDP on that, and we also give you a very specific top 10 industry of how do you compete in this market. It's all done, folks. You do not have to go out there and hire a consultant. 
and no disrespect to consultants, we have a lot of them that, that do a wonderful job, but it's already done. This is customized report that is done on a yearly basis. Okay, and if you've lost all of this, you go right back to export.gov, type that up, and all the information that I just talked about, it's right there. Customized market research, in addition to that harmonized code schedule B numbers, it's very critical, making sure that we know what your product or what your service is. Okay, background reports. I get a lot of inquiries about background reports and you go, Fred, hey, I've got an order of two container loads worth about $20 million and I've, this person wants to buy it. Well, first thing you want to know, find out a little bit about the person. Is the lights on? Is somebody home? Is that building actually there? Believe it or not, in many cases, it's not. But in most cases, it, there is. But it's absolutely sure, you want to make sure that if somebody came up that, you want to make sure you have that information, and we do that. That's our 160 offices in, in over 80 um, countries on that. Yesterday I got a call and say, Fred, we had an issue right here. I uh, made the shipment, but I never got paid. We do some mediation. I'm not an attorney, but he said, he said, you said. So on behalf of the U.S. Embassy, we will send a letter out and say, hey, what happened here? So that's another resource that we provide for you on that. Okay, here's another example of a software company that we've done, and the company basically said we had a reseller in India that tells that there's 15% sale without holding tax. Right away, I was on the phone with the U.S. Commercial Service asking, is this right? Within a week, we had the information we needed to eliminate that tax. Another resource that we have, partner search matching through a gold C service. So let's say you have a product, you're ready to go, you've got the product, you've never exported, we'll set up the criteria for it. Mexico is your number one market. We'll go out there and set up, if it happens to be at 10 o'clock at night and maybe eight o'clock in the morning, not Mexico, we'll have a three-way conference, uh, conference call with the U.S. Embassy will ask for the criteria, and we go on the basis of your expectations, not ours. So I think that's really important that you really want to uh, remember, is we base it on your expectations. Once that's done, we, we set up the appointment 30 to 60 days later, in one-on-one -on -one meeting, whether it's Mexico, whether it's Brazil, whether it's in the Middle East, you fly out there, meetings are set up. So what you're really saying from a shotgun approach, it really narrows down. As Roy is standing up, he's giving me the cue that my, uh, 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 my uh, presentation very quickly, trade shows, we support that. So. During the U.S. Trade Pavilion, we narrow down the process. So, if the cost could be large as five to ten thousand, we bring in U.S. companies together and we reduce the cost on behalf of U.S. companies. And then one final thing, uh, I do have information in the back here. If if you need any information. I, I've got Erica Ramirez, Edward Roiberg, Tony Michelski, and these individuals are senior international trade specialists that covers the industry and the phone number is right there. But nothing else, if you lost all that information and you can't keep up what I said in less than 15 minutes, go to export.gov, Inland Empire, or if, uh, better yet, give us a call. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would recommend that all of you get in contact with Fred directly, have that opportunity to go visit his office, and Fred will bring the personal touch that's necessary to guide your business towards exporting opportunity and that bigger, fatter bottom line that we're all looking for. And now I'd like to 
uh, introduce Elizabeth Wynn. And uh, do you have the PowerPoint okay there? You don't? I do. Okay, great. Super. Elizabeth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Um, the whole focus of this is to help you expand your businesses and to consider global markets as you move forward. First and foremost, U.S. manufacturers are sitting on potentially untapped opportunity. Keep in mind that you're made in USA and uh, even made in California. The label and quality are very highly valued. I can't tell you how important that is. Um, and it's, it's something that we need to, to take into consideration. I also want to back up a little bit. Um, we're part of CMTC, the California Manufacturing Technology Consulting Organization, which is part of the NIST Manufacturing Extension Partnership. Our focus is to work with manufacturers in strengthening their capabilities. My focus in working with a program called Export Tech is to maximize the growth opportunities that you have within your organizations by getting you involved in selling into global markets. So uh, interesting, couple slides here with facts. Traditionally, less than 39% of our manufacturers export, and of those, 57% typically export to one market, definitely less than five markets. If you're already exporting, what are you doing to maximize that opportunity? A lot of companies aren't looking at that. That's a huge source. And if you're exporting to three or four or five com uh, markets, why not make it you know, seven, eight, or 10? This is a statistic from California 2013. We exported $168 billion worth of goods. Okay, and that was a record year. I, I would tried to get the, the 2014 and was not able to do it. But the demand for our products is there. This is just to highlight, you know, as, as Fred mentioned, 95% of the consumers reside outside of the U.S. The emerging opportunities for, uh, for growth will be Latin America and Asia. Okay, so keep that in mind. This is another graph just to show you. Look at our top three trading partners. It's Canada, of, you know, Canada, Mexico, and China, all right? And the top 15, it's, it's a lot of Asia, some Europe, um, and then keep in mind North America. First, if you're just starting, Canada and Mexico are great first steps, especially with the, we're part of what's called the, the uh, NAFTA agreement, the North American Free Trade Agreement. There are benefits, and in the second session, we'll actually talk about some of those opportunities. Here is just a listing of some of the types of products by NAICS Code, okay? Top sectors, aerospace, automotive, um, medical, uh, you know, machinery, food processing, agricultural, it, the list goes on and on. Um, it, you know, you need to look at it and see if there's opportunity there. So, and this is my $64,000 question, right? If, if we represent only 5% and 95% of the consumers are outside, why is it that more manufacturers aren't exporting, notice their equipment, components, products, and services in global markets? We're, we're trying to get you excited about going overseas. This is some of the reason that companies don't expand. They're too small or it's too complicated. It's too risky, and there, there, I, I will be honest, there is a little bit of complication, but it's an investment. I think the, the greatest reason is we don't know how to move forward, but what we are, are here to tell you is with unique products and a strategy, you can move forward, and you can do it very systematically. Motivation, access to customers, expanding sales, boosting profits, isn't that why we're in business? Okay, so we need, you know, we need to look at overseas markets as an opportunity. Also, what's interesting, this is uh, Mike Stone of Stone & Associates has done a lot of, of reporting, but we've noticed that successful exporters grow 2.4 times faster. They're also very dominant players in their own markets. It makes them more, it helps them to be stronger. These are just some questions that I have. You know, what are you looking to do in the next three years? Okay, are your sales, are they growing? Okay, then you're probably not, you know, there's, there's not as great a need to go overseas. But if they're flat or declining, where are we gonna look for markets? Okay, in the US it's, it's fairly saturated and it's very highly competitive, right? There are, there's a lot of demand, a lot of people are willing to pay for our products if they can get your attention. 
Some of the questions, do you already sell overseas? What are you doing to expand that? Okay, if you're not exporting, are you receiving inquiries for which you're not responding? Okay, a lot of them sit off to the side. Okay, that, I recently met with a company and it was interesting because I asked this very question. He comes with a stack of paper. He had three inquiries that were worth over half a million dollars. And he was sharing how, how he had been struggling. There is opportunity. We, we want to know that there are resources to help you move forward. Let's get more proactive. If we're going to make the investment, let's be proactive rather than reactive. If you're brand new to export, export.gov is, is a great first start. Uh, we have a lot of manufacturers that are in that, that one to five market range. And then the, even the experienced, Roy will tell you, he's always looking to expand. Okay, one of the interesting um, aspects of global markets is it's never boring, okay? So it's, but get your foundation. Um, the key is having a, a, a growth plan. How are you gonna get there? What are you doing? Which markets, as Fred said, where are we gonna look? Um, let's make it easier internally so that we can respond to these, to these opportunities and make it more seamless. So here the focus is, do you have an export growth plan, okay? Look at it as a roadmap. And the benefit here is that you're better able to respond to inquiries, you're able to minimize your risk, more importantly, you can accelerate the sales growth. Also, as you, as you expand, it becomes a competitive advantage. Your ability to deliver regularly and systematically is going to provide a competitive advantage. Uh, keep in mind, there are a lot of different departments within your organization. Communication is key, all right? In fact, we just, we just did a program yesterday, and, and that's this, some of this is some of the frustration. But, uh, you know, if we, if we set up a process internally and everybody knows how it works and how we work together, it's going to make it easier. And from the buyer perspective, you're going to make it easier for them to do business on, on a regular basis. Now my question here is, I've worked with a $4 billion business unit and a $10 million company. And I'm here to tell you it has nothing to do with size. This, this, this smaller company, we used to get business, we tripled the business in two years, and we used to get business we didn't even know about because we were known, we were known to be able to deliver. So, and that's, that's what I extend to you, you have that same capability. So building into the future, um, what does it take to be successful? There definitely needs to be a commitment from the executive team. There is at some point an investment of time, resources, and, and staff, okay? But you're building this, and then once you identify those markets, you want to make that commitment. You want to keep it ongoing. Um, look at this export.gov, all right? Great first resource, especially if you're brand new. There are videos there, there's information but also small business development centers, the Centers for International Trade Development, the District Export Council University programs. I facilitate a program called Export, which I'll, Export Tech, which I'll, I'll share a little bit. This is a partnership between the NIST Manufacturing Extension Partnership, of which CMC, CMTC is represented locally in Southern California with the U.S. Commercial uh, Service, all right, to help we, we work with, with companies, six to eight at a time. We, we tie in the resources. We're helping you to be successful. And the whole idea is that you create a plan and then you execute against it. And this is, this is just an overview. It's a 24-hour program over an eight to 10-week period. But notice what I will tell you is what we want you to do is we want you to take this information and use it, okay? Execute against it. We want you to, to access those customers. Um, it, it helps you to accelerate speed to market, which is pretty important. We get you connected. Time savings. Companies save a lot because they're not wasting time trying to find access to information. And then, of course, you're reducing risk and increasing your success. Some of the results that we've had, we had one company that achieved a 1,200% increase to one market in one year. Okay, another company uh, is working with a dozen uh, contracts. They went in, revised their existing contracts, and then expanded that. The idea is if you have unused capacity, how can we help you 
expand that and, and take it into the global markets. We have companies that, that are achieving awards. In fact, one of our companies here achieved, a Chino-based company who achieved a, an award last year, and then another company quadrupled its sales. Wouldn't you like to be in that, in, in that situation? Focus. It's customer sales profit, okay? Let's look at the global markets. For those of you that are thinking about expanding or new, these are three websites. I encourage you, look at the diversity of companies and also look at the products they're exporting and look at how they've done it. That'll help, that'll help motivate you. Um, the the export.gov has a lot of good articles. The, um, ex, on the CMTC website, we have a video of, of a client who went through the program who's very, he, he calls it a learning journey, but he, he's the company that expanded 1,200%. And he was already exporting to, tw to 20 countries, but now he's focused. He's very focused. Okay? And in fact, this is Richard Brent, the CEO of Luro Electronics. His comment is, if you have unique products, if, if you have extra production capacity and you're interested to expand, what we encourage is commit to global markets. And you do that by understanding the process, developing a plan, and then getting connected into your available resources. In the process, you'll create a competitive advantage that makes it that, that global customers will uh, find of interest. And the whole idea is let's increase, let's increase the business, let's expand. And our next session, we'll actually be talking about the Baja markets or Canada. There's a lot right here. Here's my information, and thank you. Thank you. I'd like to mention as a housekeeping note that we are being videoed through this, and Altec Media is uh, doing this as a sponsorship uh, for this event. Also, this will be able to be viewed uh, within a couple of days on Manufacturer's Corner. It's a local website that we have here that is promoting the Riverside County Manufacturing and Exporting Association. It's promoting the District Export Councils and all of the different elements needed for uh, you to take advantage of relative to both manufacturing and exporting. With that, I'd like to introduce Sandra Donzella from the XM Bank. Thank you, Roy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here. As Roy mentioned, my name is Sandra Donzella, and uh, I'm here to talk to you about the services that are offered by the Export Import Bank of the US, or XM Bank, which is also how we're known as. Now, uh, I always like to, to, to start by uh, pointing out that international business opportunities are no longer being pursued just um, strictly by large corporations. And you just heard of the tremendous growth opportunities that exporting can represent um, for companies of all sizes, including small and mid-sized businesses. Um, but a key component to your ability, or, or key factor that um, is likely to impact your ability to win business internationally is going to be how flexible you are in addressing the credit needs of your customers abroad, especially if you're competing for business and um, you're facing competition from perhaps foreign suppliers that are willing to offer attractive and flexible credit terms internationally. How are you gonna make sure you get paid? We have solutions for that. Or perhaps you decided to export, you've negotiated a transaction and it happens to be a sizable transaction for you and you need financing to manufacture the product and fulfill that order. How are you gonna get financing? Uh, many banks are reluctant to work with small businesses, especially if um, you're exporting. We have solutions for that. And um, perhaps you're already exporting maybe actively and growing internationally, and that growth has triggered also a financing need on your part. Again, we have solutions for that. So basically, to give you an overview, for those of you that are not familiar with our agency, once you find a buyer, you've negotiated the sale, and if financing comes up, whether it's in your, on your part or on the part of your customers, that's when you want to think about uh, calling the XM Bank. 
We're the official export credit agency of the U.S. government. So we're not a bank. We also have nothing to do with imports. Our mission is strictly to support the growth of U.S. exports to help sustain and hopefully create U.S. jobs by facilitating the financing of U.S. exports. So our focus is rather specific and it's just on um, financing solutions. Um, we, we have an 80, 80 year, uh, we've been around since 1934, so a little over 80 years. Uh, we're headquartered in Washington, D.C. Um, we are a small agency, only about 400 employees, and most of them are based in D.C. at our headquarters, which is where all of the credit decision takes place. But we also have 12 regional offices nationwide that do business development. I'm part of the West region, and I'm responsible for um, identifying companies in this region, making sure that you know we exist and the type of resources we make available to you. Uh, we're a self-sustaining agency. We don't cost the taxpayer a dime. We do charge a fee for our services. Um, and at the end of the day, we often return um, money back to the treasury. In fact, uh, last year we returned $675 million back to the U.S. treasury, which is not bad for a 400 employee agency. And what do we do? So we provide risk mitigation financial programs that can be categorized under either a loan guarantee, an export credit insurance policy, or we'll even do direct loans. What all of these programs have in common is that they minimize risk. So for instance, we offer programs for lenders which approach our agency to obtain loan guarantees. Those loan guarantees mitigate the bank's risk so that they are encouraged to have greater flexibility addressing your financing needs, or in some cases, the financing needs of your customers directly. Um, export credit insurance is the most popular program, and I have a couple of slides about that as well. And that's risk mitigation in the event of non-payment by your international customers due to either commercial or political reasons. It's actually Exxon Bank's most popular program. Over 70% of the volume that we typically handle in a given year involves applications that we receive from exporters like you that are asking us to insure their export sales. And in some cases, um, we do less of, we also have the ability to do direct loans, but we do lesser of that because we're not here to compete with the banking sector. We're he here to uh, assume the foreign risks that the private sector is unwilling or unable to take. But in some cases, if a company cannot find financing, even with our guarantee, or it could be from the guarantee of the SBA, we are prepared to consider doing a direct loan as well. Um, there's a number of eligibility criteria that um, we have to assess before determining our ability to support a transaction, but the, the most important one is U.S. content. Exxon Bank, um, as a federal agency with the underlying purpose of trying to help sustain U.S. jobs, we can only work with companies that are making the product here in the U.S. with at least 51% U.S. content. And content, we measure it at cost, so it will be the cost of raw materials, components, but also labor, usually labor, overhead allocations, et cetera, uh, bring it up quite a bit. We are prohibited from doing um, supporting transactions involving military buyers, but we can make certain exceptions. Uh, we also, even though we are a federal agency and we're prepared to take more risk, at the same time, we want to be responsible to our taxpayers' dollars, and we, do our, we are required to do our due diligence. So we want a well-established record, both on the part of the U.S. exporter and the part of the buyer. And we have credit standards that vary depending on which program is being pursued. If it's insurance, our standards are fairly flexible and we can waive part of the criteria. Um, if it's a loan guarantee or direct loan, then they're a little bit more stringent. But at the end of the day, the point is that we don't work with startups. We require track record. And we're open worldwide in over 155 countries throughout the world. But in some countries, we're closer to either political or economic reasons. And um, 
one of the things that I would encourage you to do if you're considering pursuing Exxon Bank's support, give me a call. I can always uh, guide you through our country limitation schedule. We are wide open with no restrictions whatsoever in Canada and Mexico. So if, as Elizabeth mentioned, those are great countries that could represent pretty much immediate opportunities for you. We have no restrictions whatsoever in both those markets. Um, to give you an idea of the volume that we handled last year, XM Bank um, approved over $20 billion in total financing approvals. We call that authorizations, and that's collectively including loan guarantees, insurance, and direct loans. And that in turn supported over $27 billion in exports nation from companies nationwide and uh, 164,000 U.S. Uh, jo jobs. I'd like to mention, too, that Exxon Bank, maybe about 10, 15 years ago, was very, uh, was better known for being um, Boeing's bank or the bank of involved in very large infrastructure projects. And we still, still do that, but it's very important for you to understand Exxon Bank um, is very highly supportive of small businesses, and no deal is too small for us. I think the smallest transactions that I personally worked on was for about $1,200 if it was an insurance policy. Tiny little sale, um, but we'll, we'll do it. And you know the largest deal we've done was $5 billion. So we work with companies of all sizes, but 89% of the volume that we handled last year, as well as in 2013, it was almost 90%, involved applications that we received directly, directly from small businesses. So small businesses are highly important to us. And we do that with prudent credit management practices or lost rate. It's better sometimes than most commercial banks. And um, last year we paid out um, we collected more than we paid out in claims. So we also have a very effective collections department. So think of XM Bank as you're alleviating you from the burden of collection in case you do incur a loss, and also as your international credit department, because we will do our due diligence and evaluate the buyer. Uh, we work with companies of all sectors, from manufacturers, services, um, renewable energy, uh, agricultural, medical, mining, etc. And last year, the, we, su we supported over $16 billion directly with the manufacturing sector. The best way to understand our program is to determine who needs the financing. So if it's you, the exporter, if you need financing to manufacture the product before it goes out the door, um, our solution is our working capital guarantee program or a direct loan from Exxon Bank under our Global Credit Express products. We categorize these as pre-export financing solution because they apply to you, the exporter, before the shipment takes place. In terms of what about the credit needs of your customers abroad, then we have various solutions, insurance, it could be a medium term loan guarantee or long term. Um, it all depends on the specifics of the transaction, the amount of the sale, is a capital equipment, is a consumable, that will determine uh, which program is best suited for your particular needs. And that's my job, to help you determine that. How much more time do I have? You're out of time. I'm out of time. All right. <laughs> the point is, is that we have very um, valuable solutions that can make a big difference in your ability to compete internationally help you win more business, turn opportunities to real sales while making sure you get paid.